Well, sometimes you don't get to choose the day you're going fishing. It's the day you got, and that's what we got going on today. Got about 25 mile an hour northwest winds. We're up on Winnie. We're going to pull some spinners through the weeds, show you how to catch them, not only in the weeds, but also on tough days like today, so you'll get to see some boat control tricks as well. Stay right where you're at. Fish Head's coming up. You know, you take a day like today, and there's nothing easy about it. You got to find a spot to fish where you can get out of the wind a little bit. And believe it or not, we're out of the wind right now. I mean, it is ripping. And I know it's in the mic here, and, and it's just one of those days that we like to show you because, you know, there's, there's days where you're going to have to go out and do this. Because you got that day planned. This is a good walleye right here. Let me get to my net, get him scooped up. The wind almost took my net right out of my hand there. Come here, buddy. See if we can get him up here. Oh yeah. There we go, look at that. What a great way to fire up our day. But let me tell you what we're doing. Because the way we're fishing today, number one, is a little bit intimidating for a lot of people. Because we're fishing in weeds. But fish like that walleye right there live in these weeds. And they're here for a reason. They're here because there's food in here and there's cover. So they get the best of both worlds. And I'm gonna let that guy go. He's a little bit big for dinner, but what a great way to start our day. Hang on, buddy, we'll get you back. Oh, there he goes. Boy, he's in a hurry. These fish, when they come out of these weeds, they are so feisty. But here's the thing you need to know. The weeds don't come up in most of these bodies of water until it warms up. Now this year, so it happens to be late July right now. Now, usually it's right around the beginning of July, but because of the late spring across the Midwest, it backed it off a little bit this year. But here's the thing, that fish may have been out there deep earlier this year, but here's what happens. There's a certain point where those weeds come up and that fish comes back. So what you wanna know is not all fish start on the shoreline and go deep and stay out there. A lot of them will go out, they'll mill around out there for a while and when the weed growth comes up, and all that bait fish is in those weeds, they'll come right back in and start eating. So keep that in mind, this is a gold mine. You look around today, you don't see any other boats. Now it's not just because the weather's tough. We passed a lot of boats on the way out here, drifting out deep, and here we are in 12 feet of water catching fish. Well, we've slid in a little bit along the shoreline here. I'll tell you what, I mean, you can tell by the waves we're dealing with here, we had to. But the location we're fishing, ultimately is still about the same. And what that is, is we're fishing just on the outside, along the edge of a weed bed. And these fish are relating to weeds. And if you can find that spot where they're sitting right on an edge, I'll tell you what, you can put yourself in a position Oh yeah, it's a good walleye. Not as big as I thought, just a, oh yeah, he is pretty decent size. But you can put yourself in a position where you can get these fish where they do both rest and eat. And that's what they're doing right here. Look at that. That's a beautiful walleye right there. Let's get this girl right back in the water. There she goes. When you're picking these spots though, it's really simple. And I'll, I'll tell you, when we started, we were out off of that point. And I was out on a deep piece of, or a, on a deeper running piece of structure. And up on top was this shallow weed bed. But we were so exposed to the wind. And those weeds were coming up sometimes almost all the way to the surface. And I was just trying to paint the outside of it, but it's pretty tough to do. So what I did is I came in here along this North shoreline and all I did is I started driving it. Now I'm driving it where the weed line is in this lake. Now on this lake, that weed line somewhere 10, 11 feet. So if I drive along in 10 or 11 feet, when I start seeing weeds on that graph, 
Here's what I know. I have now found another weed bed. So I'll turn, I'll go in a little shallower, make sure there's a bunch of weeds in there, and then I'll come back out, line up, and go along the outside edge of it. It's the same thing as I was fishing out there. It's just a totally different weed bed, and all I had to do was drive until I found it. And as soon as I found it, walleyes were sitting right on it as well. So just remember that. When you're looking for that weed bed, number one, in the Midwest, most of the time you're gonna find that weed line is somewhere between 10 and 12 feet. Like I say, when you find it, it's the same almost all over the lake. So then you can drive and find more of these weed beds and you'll see them on your graph. It'll just be clumps and they'll show up in red most of the time. And then you'll see fish inside those weeds too. They're in yellow. So keep that in mind, you'll find the spots and there's a whole bunch of these spots. And most of the time people are scared to fish the weeds. So you got them all to yourself just like this one. Fishing the weeds like this, it's actually a lot simpler than you may think. You know, you feel like you, you gotta worry about getting hung up all the time, you really don't. All I'm fishing today is a quarter ounce Lindy rig sinker. And all I do is, I just cast it out behind the boat. You know, it's nothing real complicated. I just flip it out there. And it, you know, you don't gotta go back that far with it because ultimately you're only going about a mile, an hour, you know, Sometimes I'll kick it up just a little bit and go a little quicker. But for the most part, I'm usually somewhere, you know, between a mile an hour and 1.4. So the other thing I do though, is even though I'm fishing crawlers today, I'm not fishing a crawler harness. And I'll tell you why. There are so many perch in here that are nibbling away at my crawler. And this guy's gonna make it really easy to show you. Oh, actually fell out. Let's, let's get a measurement on this fish first. Let's see if he's gonna, go home with us. He certainly will. I'm going to throw him in. But here's the thing. If you use a crawler harness, you've got to use a full-size crawler. And here's what happens. When you use that long crawler, time and time again, those perch come up on the back end of it, and they nip at it, and they nip at it. And all of a sudden, that crawler's down to this, but there's a hook in the back. So no longer is the crawler going like that. So what I'm doing is real simple. I'm just using the Lindy spinner straight out of the package, but I'm using the single hook Indiana version, okay? And then all I'm doing is I put a crawler on there and then I pinch them off right behind the collar, so halfway back. And the reason I'm doing that is when them perch come up and nip at it, they don't have so much crawler to nip down on and tear it off. And for the most part, that'll keep me fishing. And these walleyes, they don't care. They see this spinner spinning. They see that thing back there like this, that tail, that night crawler. And that's going to that's gonna fake like it's the tail of the bait fish. And that's what they're running up and hitting. So it's a real simple system. Now, one more thing I'm doing today. I told you at the beginning that I'd tell you a little something about boat control in big seas like this. You look in the front, my, my trolling motor is in the water. I am using it and I'm going with the wind. But here's the thing, back here you can see I'm running a drift sock. And the reason I'm running that drift sock is plain and simple. What that's doing is holding the rear end of the boat so that I can do all my steering with the front and the wind never catches the back end of the boat and swings it any direction. And that is so key. Now I do have to turn that trolling motor up just a little bit and I'm, I'm running it up on about speed number six to make it so that I can move this boat at about 1.2 with that drift sock back there. But I have perfect control to stay right on that weed line in about 11 feet where the fish are. It is so neat when these fish hit a spin or two because you know what? They're chasing it usually from a little ways away or they come at it from the side and they hit it pretty hard. And even on a day like today in a cold front, you know, you look at, look at how I'm dressed now. I started the day in shorts and that wind came up and this cold front cranked up and it's been a tough day of fishing, but I'll tell you what, just staying on this weed line, ooh, look at that. A pike <laughs> and it just goes to show you you know I've dealt with perch banging away on stuff all day long we've caught walleyes along here we've caught a walleye for dinner we've gotten some small pike and now we got ourselves a little bit better pike and you know if you work these weed lines and just keep going at it what you're gonna find is there are so many fish that live here and now keep in mind it's July so they're here 
as soon as those weeds grow, they'll be here and then they'll be here for the rest of the summer. We'll let that guy go. We'll wrap the day up with that. Hey, for more current and up-to-date information, check back with us each week on Fish Head. You never know what it's gonna be. Sometimes it's gonna be a whole bunch of big fish. Maybe a day when the sun's out and it's flat calm, or maybe a day like today when the cold front comes in and fishing gets really tough. We'll just show you how to catch them in those conditions. I'm John Thielen. We'll catch you next time.